Hi there folks, I'm Yon and today we'll be painting Angron. Welcome back to the newly revamped channel. It was the Gallery of Colors, now it's Mustache and Minis. Why? Because I have a mustache and those are some minis. So we are just gonna start painting them and having a little bit of fun while doing it. We're starting with Angron of the World Eaters and we've already painted the base, but he's got a lot of interesting bits to him and a lot of interesting detail that we're gonna do a sort of a quick painting on. Nothing too extreme or too complicated but we're gonna give him some love. We're gonna start with the skin. Now the entirety of the skin was originally primed black and I want to keep it a little bit on the darker side. So I started with an airbrush and I used black red from Vallejo. Then for the first few steps of highlights, I used flat red as a sort of zenithal to the skin. For the shadows and creases in the muscles, as well as on top of the wings, I sprayed with some sick old burgundy. I don't want that bright red look. I want more of a natural feel to him. So I will have a little bit more of a dark burgundy look to him. You could almost call him Angron Burgundy. Thank you, thank you. Hold your applause. For highlights on the skin, or should I say, to better establish a mid-tone, I started with the flat red again, and did quick lines to make the muscles more natural and interesting, a little bit more real looking. Also, I did some edge highlight on the face and where I felt he needs it with the flat red. I would rather do many thin layers than a few thick ones to build up that textured muscle, muscle look, that fibrous uh, little thin lines really sell the point. Next I want the shadows a bit deeper. I put null oil on my palette and did the same with the, as I did with the flat red, but dragged it toward the crevices between the muscles as well as recess shading where I felt necessary. To get a more natural looking highlights here and there, I drag some thin sandalwood from scale 75 over the veins and the greatest highlights. The same method I used for the original muscle look with the flat red, just to accent the muscle look that I'm going for. Now this takes some time, but I feel like it's worth it. Now let's move on to some of the more interesting bits. We're going for the wings and the claws and the face. I started by base coating the wing membranes carefully with black templar. Now the difference between using black templar as I said it is a contrast paint as opposed to maybe Abaddon black or Corvus black or whatever is that because it is a contrast paint and you put it over this dark tone you will still keep the original hue a little bit. I know it's quite dark over dark but the hue will still come through a little bit and it makes it feel a little bit more natural looking. Afterthought uh, that perhaps I should have kept the wings in subassembly because it was quite difficult to, to get into all the nooks and crannies. I recommend using a flat bristled fat bellied brush so you can get a long strokes and don't have to lift the brush off the model too many times. Once the contrast paint is properly dry, we start dry brushing the membranes. First with a dark grey, I used ashen grey, but any dark grey will do in honesty. Trying to keep away from the red skin, but get close to it, and just easy back and forth to catch those delicate folds in the wings. When you feel it is sufficient, we move on to a lighter grey. I used storm vermin fur, and now I'm focusing on the middle of the membranes to add a little bit more depth to the wings. After doing the entirety of the wings with these two dry brushes, I go back with the lighter dry brush and I focus more on the end of the wings and those veins in it to have them pop just that tiniest bit more. Next the claws and the hooves and all those nasty pieces of business. Base coat them all with a baton black. They are dark, not unlike the wings, but we want a bit of a difference. Two thin coats on all the claws, nails and what have you took a fair bit of time. And just to start work on another step, I also base coated his teeth. Next it's the edge highlight horridness, just a minestratum grey on all the edges of those spiky parts. It's a lighter colour than I used before, but uh, that's what it's for. I was going for a more 
sharp look and the dry brushing look wasn't really selling it for it so a lighter color with just the edge highlight sold it as a sharper thing now to finish off his natural loosely phrased look we must add some color to the details of his face the teeth were already painted in a band in black but now let's get those chompers colored in Starting with flayed one flesh, you get the base tone down, but then adding a bit of thinned white into the flayed one flesh for some highlights. If you make a mistake like I did, you can always just go back with your base coat, in this case a band black, and try again, and there you go, much better. The tongue gets a small layer to it as well, thin white paint mixed into rock hard flesh, and I now mix it into the sandalwood from the muscle highlights, and layer that on the tongue. Just one thin coat to give it a different hue to the rest of the body. Finally, his eyes get the demonist of demonic yellow, army painter's demonic yellow, and his physical form is done. Now it's just time for clothes, weapons, metallics, armor, decorations, chains, skulls, and what have you. But before we go into that part, I would of course like to point out that below there is stuff to clink. The Patreon campaign. I would really appreciate to see more of you fine folk there. It really helps out the channel to grow and to fund all the shenanigans that I have in mind and want to do in the future for you guys. Well, and for myself. Also, there's a spread shop down there where there's uh, t-shirts, aprons, a lot of stuff with the logo and everything on it. If you want to. By all means check it out well as well there's an amazon affiliate link if you decide to buy something from there i will get a small kickback no extra charge to you and i would greatly appreciate it of course we have that subscribe and like button and if you feel like it by all means press it i would really really love for you to do that but now let's jump into the next part and those are the metallics we're going to start with all the bronze bits of him we we'll start with a general coating of brass scorpion all over all the bits that will become bronze in the end. Some I used airbrush over and others I needed to brush. Senethals here and there with uh, the Vallejo air gold to add some extra new ones to some parts. Same thing applies with a brush where the airbrush was not feasible. Starting with two to three layers of brass scorpion and then splotches of gold very thinly here and there for some extra added flavor. Using the airbrush took about one tenth of the time it took to brush, so I'm gl very glad to have it. And I would obviously recommend for all those that can to get one. They are a great tool for mini painting and of course can be found in the Amazon store I have linked in description. Next, let's break up the bronze, brassy gold look a bit. I shade all the trims and the decor with Agrax Earthshade mixed with Lamia Medium and uh, the not the gloss type I want to dull it down just a little bit then for everything that are plates or well not the trim I shade that with a general helping of Cryptac armor shade now that we have uh, two distinct uh, sort of variants of brassy coppery goldness and now to tone it down even more and make it look a little bit less shiny and pristine and more worn so we start with a dry brush of Nacron compound, but focusing more on the trims and the areas not shaded with the Cryptic armor shade. If it goes on the darker gold bit, it's okay, though, because it just adds to the worn nature of the thing. Next, uh, for the World Eater symbols and where we want some extra verdigris, I'm using Nihilac Oxide thinned out with a lot of water, so it'll dry somewhat chalky. I put a hefty amount on the areas and then wipe the top with just my finger and it looks lovely. Now he also has some steel bits to him since all the bronze bits are done so let's focus a little bit on the steel bits now. All the bits that are going to be some variant of steel or silver will get a base coat first. I'm using plate mail metal but in truth you can use whatever metallic paint you want. For guys like these, I would however steer clear from those bright and super clear paints like Vallejo or silver or similar paints because they are quite shiny and we don't want them to be overly shiny in the metallic areas. 
The main thing now is just doing the grunt work. All the teeth here and there on the armor, cables, weapon bits, chains, piercings on the wing, various rivets and stuff here and there. Just take your time and do one part at a time so you don't miss any of the actual parts that you want to paint silver. Also, now we start assembling a little bit from sub-assemblies. The wrist guard now go on the hands, so we can shade all the chain around the hands together. After all the steel metallics are filled in, we start working on some depth. We will use two colors, thinned out, basilicum grey and null oil on separate bits, just to get some slight difference in all the metallic silver bits of the model. But we still want them both to read as steel or iron. So flat bits like the spikes and weapon things will get a basilicon and grey mixture, but be careful to drag the paint where you want it darkest, and if you feel like it, it's a bit splotchy or thick, don't be afraid to use a moist brush, paper towel, or indeed your finger to wipe away some of the excess. I use my finger because it gives a grimy appearance that I like. Chains, rivets, cables and similar fine detail will get a null oil and a heavy wash of it because we want quite a lot of depth and we want to darken it down for now. Look out though that it doesn't get away from you and flow into other parts that are ready. If you feel timid about using too much, do two thinner wash coats instead. Finally, when it's all dried and darkened, I go in with the gentlest of dry brushes of Nacron compound again, just to get the corners and the details to pop ever so slightly. So we're stepping away from metallic paints again, and we're going back into regular paints. I would now recommend to change out the water you have, and also maybe change out the paper in the wet palette, just so it won't contaminate the regular paint or the paint pots or anything like that. It's always good to start fresh when you're going from a metallic paint to regular paint. Now it's the leather and the cables and the skulls. We're going to start with all the leather bits, and I'm just going for the same color all in all for them, as they are not that many to be honest. I want to go for a dark green theme that the box art has, but perhaps a little bit toned to the figure that I am painting. So I start with Incubi Darkness, and I give all the leather parts two coats of that, as the color underneath is not helping it in this case. Silver here and there, and gold and red, so we definitely need to go over that entire thing. Next, it's a, a not-so-timid slather of null oil to darken even further down. Don't let it go astray, but we want the green really toned down dark. Now let's get some extra depth to the leathers. We establish our mid-tone again with the Incubi Darkness, but steering clear of all those darker recesses where the null oil settled. We want to have quite some depth to this, so shadows are important. And finally, with edge highlighting and a bit of scratching maneuvers of Sons of Horus Green, we finish the leather bits off, and they look, do look rugged and nice and fitting now. The cable and the skulls are getting pretty much the same treatment. We start on the cables and we give them all a base coat of Rackarth flesh. A little bit of a lighter color in the darkness that is this miniature. There are many cables here and there and we have to get them all, but trying to steal away from the actual quartz on the inside of the cables as we've already painting the, painted them and are focusing on the housing of the cables at this point. After that, all the skulls he has hanging here and there get two thin coats of bone white. That is the same color we used on the base. If you painted the base in a different color, then definitely use that one. We want them to fit together and look good together. After that is all done, the cables and the skulls are washed with Agrax Earthshade, because even though they are lighter, we still need them to be dirtied down somewhat to fit the look of the guy. The cables we will leave as is, as after the wash, and they look grimy and dirty, and they seem somewhat fitting. However, the skulls will have bone white established again, with a little bit of a quick dry brush of the original base color we used. He's almost done. There's only one small detail left. We've done the skin, we've done the armor, we've done all the extra fluffy bit on him. But now 
he has this interesting looking sword and we want to do something interesting with it. This next part is basically just a thought experiment. I might go back a little bit later on down the line when I feel like I have more time and more life in me to maybe paint up the sword a little bit again. But we are going to make something interesting to begin with. Samniarius, the sword of Angron. We're going to start by getting some white into the crevice of the blade and then clean up the lines a little bit with Abaddon Black. The sword will end in a burning essence and a black blade. And this is the first step to that end. Next, I'm personally using a paint called Citrine Yellow, which is a candy ink from Green Stuff World. But any brighter, thin yellowish paint will do. Or indeed, better yet, bright yellow ink. After that, we are going for a not so much of a dry brush, dry brushing of some orange paint to bring the feeling of heat back into it. Just stroking the brush back and forth on top of all the skulls in the sword to get that slight heat feeling so it's just not that bright yellowy color. And then, after that orange is done, we're going to do the same thing just now with the tiniest hint of a red thing. So it will go from that bright yellow color up to a red color. After that, again, I must establish the black to be right and correctly black, but much more focused this time around. We are defining the edge properly now and trying now very hard to get some edges clean and nice. Next, we have to do a little bit of edge highlighting on the sword because it's a little bit flat, even though it is bright yellow and black, but it's still a little bit on the flat side. We're going to start by edge highlighting a very thin red paint on all the edges of the sword. And then after that is done, we're going in again with a bit of an orange on select parts, the spikier bits where the corners meet, everything like that, to give that extra hint of a slight fire inside the darn thing. Finally, because we're almost done, a wee bit of blood on the chain axe, as it is Angron, and no blood for the blood god makes Korn a sad boy. I would like to thank you very much for coming here today, looking at this lovely little Angron guy that I had so much fun painting. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Let's finally plop him on his base and take a look at what the guy actually looks like ready. Let the colors flow. I've been Yon. Farewell. Mm -hmm.